at the Chateau de la Lande where Michael Potts and I have cooked up a plan of Christmas bread and delicious local cheeses. Admittedly, this was more my plan than Michael's because he's so great at making bread. I thought it'd be really fun to persuade him to make a Christmas bread. And I think I'm slightly keener about this than he is. Come on, you know you want to deep down. Well, well. This is because you haven't got your baby, your sourdough starter. Yeah, um, I'm going to bring it for Christmas. Good. I'm Phew. Um, at the moment. <laughs> And um, I've never done this kind of bread, so it's quite exciting. I I'm looking forward to the new challenge, but um, it's, yeah, it's going to be new. It's a challenge and it's being filmed. What could possibly go wrong? What are we here? What, why are we here? What's going on? <laughs> freaking caraway. Oh, that's going to be nice. Okay, so today we could be making freaking caraway bread. <laughs> that um, was fig and caraway bread, not frigging caraway bread. Freaking caraway bread. caraway bread. It sounded a little bit like that. <laughs> No, we're going to be making fig and caraway bread. Okay, let's just come clean and tell everyone that we have no idea whether or not this is strong white flour. This is flour. unlabeled white flour. And without Maria, we are lost. And this Maria is not replying to us. It's Nothing, just staring out the window. It's lovely. Then we've got some other flour. <laughs> which appears to be whole wheat flour. Which we also need 200 grams of. We have found a recipe online for this, but we are making many modifications, the least of which is that we don't know what flour we're using. Okay. Tablespoon of sugar, where's the sugar? So you've been living here for what, 17 years? I mean, on and off admittedly, but I think you know where the sugar is, Michael. Genius. That we are fairly confident about, that is sugar. No, to be fair, we did nearly use the icing sugar as flour, yes. so that was a save. At least it's all fluffy. Ah, uh, this is why I wanted you to do this recipe, because I love caraway seeds. And for me, they're very, very festive, because they remind me of Germany. And when I think of Germany or Austria, I think Christmas. What do you think about caraway seeds? Mm. I still don't have an opinion on them. Just literally a blank? A oh. negative blank or no, a positive no, blank? No, it's more of an ambivalence. It's Total ambivalence. I mean, they're nice. They're different. So I love them, but no, nothing. But let's see if maybe when they're made into a bread, shall we yeah. see if that changes things? Yeah. But to that, you are adding dried figs and, again, in a deviation from the recipe, dried cranberries. Yes. I like those things. Those are lovely things. <laughs> yeah, those are brilliant. Next, we're adding all the wet ingredients, which is 125 milliliters of milk. Onto the ambivalent seeds. Onto the ambivalent seeds. 30 grams of melted butter. 100 milliliters of water. Great. And now we start kneading. Well this is the fun bit, especially to watch. Nothing more satisfying than watch someone knead delicious bread that you get to eat later. It's all sticking to the thing. That is really <laughs> sticky. <laughs> is that what you were planning? <laughs> la, la, la. La, 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 la. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Okay, it looks as though you've pulled things together now. That's a save. That was quite a save. That was lucky. Your reputation is intact. <laughs> I am a bit disappointed, though, about your apron today. It's less festive, I feel, than the last one. It's got a bit of red. It's, it's okay, that's good. why you chose it. Yes. Fair enough. Matches my pants. Um, uh, what? <laughs> oh, you were wearing the red trousers. Sorry, when you said pants, I didn't realise that you meant American pants. Yes. I was thinking very British. I was a little confused. When you're baking sourdough, you don't need to knead. No so need to need. A whole new experience for me. Hi, well, I thought you seemed a little bewildered. Yeah. Because you are the sourdough master, it has to be said. It's much easier. You're getting near the squeaky end. You've hit your stride, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. this is it. I, I feel that we got off to a shaky start with the bread. Yeah. But, but it's a new bread and we hadn't known each other yet, so it was a <laughs> awkward introductions. But I think now we're firm friends. Okay, just making this into a nice tight ball. And we'll put that it's lovely. in the bowl. And then it says we need to oil the clean Always oil the clean <laughs> Do you always oil your clean I've never oiled the clean Okay, this is the first time for everything. So it doesn't stick to the rising dough? I guess so. There we go. Oh, you don't put the clean film on the top? I presume. I think you cover the whole top of it with cling film, don't you? Like well, that. Let's do both, shall we? Well, it doesn't reach. 
We'll do another one this way. It's a lot of clink, Phil. Where's the freshness? It, where it's been for the last 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Unclear whether the recipe was calling for that much cling film, but no one could say we underclinged this bread. Yeah. Now we have to find a warm place in the chateau. <laughs> okay, you can either have a cool place mm -hmm. or a boiling hot inferno. Yes. That's the dining room. Okay. Oh, no, 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 that's too hot. That's too what, hot. Too hot for the dough? I think here is perfect. Do you want to put a little table there? Yes. Well, how about just on that chair? Look, that's not far into the room. No, but it's like four degrees warmer. <laughs> hey, try going to the next room, it's about 20 degrees warmer. See? Towering inferno. Oh, that is... That's too hot. <laughs> I know, we've never said that. <laughs> uh, you don't have a surface, though. How about here, on that chair? This is an excellent chair. The bread is happily proving in its specifically temperature controlled environment that Michael spent quite a lot of time finding. And now we're going to run out to the local cheese shop, which those of you who watch this channel regularly will know is in the local petrol station. Trust me, it's good. Mm. petrol station this is the best cheese shop there is really oh yeah have you oh, not been here no this is new to me this is incredible oh dear mike we're not off to a great start have you seen the wine on special offer sparkling wine that means the widow of lalande i think at the moment it's quite lucky for philip that we're not actually married Michael, we have oh, to yes. get that one. Do you see what it's called? Yes. Le Bourguignon. You have to wear your sash again. I think I found mine. Soulmate? <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hot chocolate. Yeah. Alors, je cherche plein de fromages différents et des choses que peut-être je n'ai pas goûté avant. Déjà, Michael, I've vu fondue au noir. Oui. So I'm looking for things that we haven't tried before as well as our favourites. C'est une tome de l'arrière, une tome de vache. Je connais pas. Uh -huh. Ben, on va essayer ça. J'avais dit, je voulais goûter de nouvelles choses. Oh, c'est doux, hein? C'est très doux. It's very gentle, that one. Merci. Ah oui, il y en avait un ici qu'on voulait essayer. C'était le bourguignon. On va goûter ce très bon. Vous avez la tombe aux fleurs qui a du goût. Ah oui, j'ai goûté ça en Bourgogne et j'ai adoré. Oui. Un morceau là? Oui, merci. C'est aïe et poivre. Oh, parfait. So this is quite a lot of cheese. This, this is... is a lot of cheese. But there's a lot of people in the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. C'est beaucoup de fromage, mais nous sommes nombreux. Là, c'est bien, c'est bien. Merci beaucoup. Voilà. It's 49 bucks, How happy are you right now? This is a brilliant haul. This is, it is a good. really good haul. Isn't it the best shop yes. ever? What's the petrol like? <laughs> Carl loves it. Very, very, very excited. You've got your happy face on. Yes. No, darlings, the cheese is not for you. Even though you're so magnificent that you basically get away with everything. Looks as though something quite exciting is happening over here. Yes. The dried fig. Should I check one? They're approved. Past, yes. Yeah. Very much approved. All right. Nearly the final step. I'm going to mix the 
uh, cranberries and figs into the. Oh, so how does this happen? Well, I don't know. This is what this is my this is how I've imagined it. So you want to try and get the figs and all the things interspersed as much as possible. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to make a, a fig sandwich. Excellent. That sounds good already. And I'm going to. That's a lot of fruit, isn't that's it? A lot of fruit. Fish bosh bang. And that's it. That's it. That seems to be more fruit than bread. I'm going to be honest. So it's healthy. <laughs> so we leave that for half an hour, and then um, put it in the oven for 45 minutes. Can't wait, honestly. Just want to taste it. I have a piping hot casserole. I have and a very beautiful Christmas bread. And it goes. Oh, yum. It's the moment we've been waiting for. Oh, look at that. And he's done it again. Look at the gooey pieces of Oozing. fig in there. Using with fruit. Mm. You're going to try. Look what's just come out of it. It looks so good. It is incredibly heavy. It is. It's quite a brick, isn't it? Yeah, that's, it's that's the fruit. The, that's the fruit. It's definitely the fruit. Figs are phenomenally heavy. But I've had a plan. Yeah. I think that you should slice just the top off. Just here? Yes, be careful you don't hurt yourself. Okay. Oh, that looks Ooh, good. That looks quite good. Now, this is a Mondal that we just bought. It is incredibly delicious. And it's from the Jura Mountains in France. And it's always matured on spruce planks. And it's always served in an actual spruce box like this. That is perfect because you can actually put this into the oven and it gets really warm and gooey. And in fact, you can only buy it in winter. So we try always to have this around Christmas time. But I am thinking, serve the cheese in the Christmas bread. And then you take the innards of the Christmas bread. And try them now. And no. No, okay, okay, we'll keep some for the others, but we could, we could toast it and we could try something now. We, we could just try, try the crust. It does look good. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. The caraway actually tasted really nice. See? What is your ambivalence now? Well, yeah, when it's cooked and it's kind of infused and everything, it's, it's gorgeous. I love caraway, but I'm say, I must say the fig is amazing. Mm, I haven't got to a fig part yet. Mm, so good. Your idea of putting the cheese inside the bread is going to be amazing. Well, I'm going to get on with it. Okay. And I will pop this into the oven. Good. There's just so much to eat in the house at the moment that I think we'll just have the Mondo today and we'll save the other cheeses for a big Christmas cheese board nearer to Christmas. Which will be an excellent excuse to use my Cheeses of France book in the same kind of spruce container that the Mondo comes in. I got this at the local charity shop and it has every cheese in France and tells you the right times of year to eat them. Because apparently, oh yes, in France, you must eat your cheese at the right time of year. And it tells us that this Mondor is sadly 45% fat and indeed does tell us that it can only be eaten at the end of autumn or in winter. We've managed to cook a Mondor, put it inside <laughs> it. So that's the filling. Help yourselves. Just try it looks amazing. facing little bits. Did you get inspired by my goulash at all? You are yeah, my major inspiration at all things. I am your muse. You are my muse. Okay, quite right. <laughs> no, I just loved, actually, the fact that you served it in bread was so good. And I just thought it would be really nice to have some delicious French. I think it's a really good idea, actually. But it, it looks very pretty. Oh, look at that. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Merry Advent, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. And now I'll get back to my uh, melty cheese. Merry, Merry Advent. Advent. Christmas crisis. Which part? <laughs> this, this was for the actual Christmas cake. And I thought it would be mixed in with the other fruit. Shall we do like another one? <laughs> no, no. I can't believe I did that. Now what you can do is you can mix that with like a, an icing or something and put it on top. Any of you who saw the advent calendar with the cake will know that I forgot the sugar. Luckily remembered last minute. Oh my God. I forgot the dates in a date and chocolate cake. How is that even possible? So basically we've got a chocolate Christmas cake. Yeah. Well, oh, there's lots of raisins. Yeah. Yeah, raisin and chocolate. And cranberries are in there as well. See? Sure. I'm beginning to doubt <laughs> everything. I think found them in the fridge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's not even chocolate in there. Yeah. Is there even cake? The car keys might be in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> or in the cake. Or in the cake. <laughs>